Okay, so in a previous video, we have seen how to plot, plot the derivative function of a given uh, function. So in this video, we will uh, do the same activity but with a graph, with another uh, graph, okay? With another function actually. So here we take another graph. So this is the graph of x cube. So here it is. So this is the graph of x cube versus x. And um, here, okay? And if I divide this by 3, so if I plot x cube by 3 versus x, the whole graph gets less steep by a factor of 3. So we can clearly see here. So I'll just get that into effect. And there you go. Okay, so there you can see the graph just got less steep by a factor of 3. And I also just added the uh, numbers on the x-axis also. Now we'll try to plot its derivative function. So here I get my axis. Okay, so here I have my uh, the two axes, okay, axes, okay. And now I'm going to plot the derivative of derivative function of this uh, function here. So if I go at this point at x equals 0, the, the tangent here is this, okay. And the slope of this tangent is clearly 0. So I plot a 0 there, okay. At 0, I get a, I get a 0. At 1, this is the tangent. Now how do I find the slope of this tangent? Okay, so one way I can, one way to do this is, uh, so the function here is y equals x cube by 3, right? If I differentiate this, I get its derivative, right, at every point. And using that, I can find the slope of the tangents. So what I do is, I differentiate this, I get dy by dx. So if you are uncomfortable with uh, uh, differentiation, you should watch my early video on differentiation of polynomials and the power rule. So here I keep the uh, coefficient as, as, it, as it is. So the one third remains one third. So for x cube I use the power rule. I get the 3 at the place of the uh, coefficient and I reduce the power of x by 1. So I get 2 there. So which is so I can cancel the 3 by 3 and I finally end up getting x square. So I just remove the intermediate step there and I can write it more neatly. So there I go. I get the derivative as dy by dx equals x square. Okay, so I just change its color. There I go. Okay, so uh, x square. So what this means is that if I'm at x equals 2, so the slope of the tangent at this point, so this is the tangent at that point, this slope will be uh, square of the x value. So the x value here is 2. 2 square, 4. The slope of this thing is 4. So I plot that. At 2, I get a slope of 4. So I am going to plot 4 here. So at 2, I go and plot it at 4. And so I see, similarly, I draw a tangent at 3. And the slope of this tangent will be 3 square 9. But uh, now, there is a problem here. So I can't plot at 3, I can't plot 9. Because that will go out of the board. Okay, but that will, I can guess the what the curve that sh should look like. Okay. So that was 2 at 4. So uh, yeah, at, at 1, I had got... Uh, so... I draw a tangent, I, I left the uh, number 1 right. So at 1 I draw a tangent, this is the tangent and the slope of this tangent will be simply 1 square. 1 square is 1, so I draw point, uh, I plot a point at 1 comma 1 also. So these are the 3 points that I have plotted and the third point should be somewhere, so this is 3. So this is 4, double of 4 should be 4, so it should be somewhere uh, around there, okay. So uh, I'll just draw the, draw a curve passing through all these points. And that should look like, so I'll just draw it, okay? So here is the curve. Okay, so this is uh, the curve that I get. And obviously this is not a very clean curve because I've drawn it freehand. But yeah, looking at this, I think you can guess that this, this looks like the curve of x square. And that is pretty obvious because after all, I'm plotting the derivative curve and uh, x square is a derivative, uh, yeah? So this should look like the, this is the curve of x square. So, yeah, so that is it. And now, uh, let us take a moment and look at uh, what we've after all done in this whole process. So, uh, we've actually plotted the value of the slope in this curve. Uh, so, we've taken the slope, value of the slope of the tangent in, of this curve and plotted it, plotted it in this curve, okay? In this graph here. So, uh, let's say, let us take uh, the example of this. When x equals 1, if we see the height of this graph, so the height of this graph, this height is actually 1, right? 
this whole height, this height is one, and this height actually represents the value of slope at x equals one in this graph. So if I draw slope, if I draw tangent at this point in this graph uh, at x equals one, the slope is represented by this height. The value of slope in this curve is represent, represented by that height. So here it is one. So this slope of the tangent of this tangent is also one. Similarly, at two, if I draw tangent. This slope is represented by this height. Okay, so this height, uh, this height here, which in this case is four. Okay, so this height is the slope of this tangent here. Okay, and that is a that is a, a very important point that you need to keep in your mind. So just write it somewhere. Okay, in brief, and keep it in your mind. Okay, keep it in the back of your mind, and let us proceed. So this is the graph of x square. So for now, forget this part of the uh, board, and let us focus on this part. So we were so if I draw two boundaries at the uh, at x equals one and x equals two, what we get is this shape. And if you remember, this is the shape whose area we were trying to find out. Okay, and um, what we had done was we had divided the whole thing into many rectangles, right? So I had drawn many rectangles here, and uh, then what we had done was we had taken those rectangles, rearranged them to form a single rect giant rectangle. Okay. a uh, bigger rectangle so i taken all those rectangle uh, all those small uh, rectangles and then all strips as you uh, you may call them rearrange them into this rectangle okay and the, because they are made up the, made they were made about uh, made up of the same amount of paper so their area was the same and we had said that the area of all those strips was almost equal to the area of the whole shape so if you could find the area of this rectangle we were able to we could we will be able to find the area of the whole shape right and how do you find the area of this thing well because we haven't changed the width of the rectangles right we have keep kept them same we have not uh, done uh, done anything with the width so this whole width is actually this width that's the same thing so and this width is we know this width right 2 minus 1 which is 1 in this case so we know this width now all we want to find out is this height Uh, to find the area of this, okay, because we'll multiply those two numbers to get the area of this. And what is this height? Well, this height, as I have said in my previous videos, this height is actually the average of all the uh, heights of all those rectangles. Okay, so we have to, in a way, so if we have to find this height, in a way, we have to find the average of all those. We have to find the average height of all those rectangles from this point to this point. Okay, so all those rectangles. So I'll just remove this uh, rectangle from here. and now our aim is to find the average of average height of all those rectangles okay so uh, that is a very tedious process to do directly uh, so now uh, we'll have to come up with a small trick so this is a very uh, um, this is a very tricky this is a whole tri this is a tricky part of the whole um, uh, concept of integration which we are doing and so i think i should stop at this point uh, or else i'll increase or else i'll start confusing you but for now we you need to keep all this in mind okay so the first point this is the derivative of this the height of this derivative function represents the slope of the of the actual function at the same point point number 2 okay so that is the point number 2 point number 3 that you keep uh, that you need to keep in your mind is that to find the area of this shape we need to find the average height of all those rectangles so okay so these are some points that you need, need to keep in your mind and i think we we'll continue the end uh, continue in the next video and also i I'd, um, i'd say i'd suggest that you watch the next video in continuation or else uh, you might break the chain of thought okay so watch that video also in continuation that taking a break if you can okay so we'll uh, meet in the next video bye